my name is Jill DeFelice, and this is Jerry Pagliaro, and we are members of the Seaport Stitchers Quilt Guild here in Tuckerton, New Jersey, and we are coming to you live today from the Tuckerton Seaport. Our group gets together, and our whole focus is to keep people quilting. It's something that's been passed down from generation to generation, like most folk arts, and so we meet, and we teach each other, and we quilt, and we share our projects, and you can find us on Facebook and on our website for Seaport Stitchers Quilt Guild. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about folk art. Lots of times people don't really have a clear understanding of what folk art is, but it's actually art that was created by people who really were not trained artists, and they used natural things and repurposed or reused things around their home to make new things that were de decorative and creative and interesting. It could be anything from ironwork to baskets to paintings, and in this case, quilting. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jerry so she can talk about quilting as folk art. Well, quilts are definitely folk art. Look back to when the covered wagons crossed the prairie, ladies brought their quilts. So what they would do would have quilt beads where they would actually pass around different quilt blocks. They would talk a little bit of gossip. You know, they would make friends. Maybe there would be new settlers coming in and they would have new quilt blocks to show. Now, legend has it that there's another famous quilt that was made during that time and it's called the Underground Railroad. It was made for the runaway slaves, so they would know which abolitionists, which were um, people that would help them. When they were traveling, uh, many times they didn't have anywhere to buy cloth to make quilts, so they would find old clothing, um, used pieces of scraps, and that's where they got their materials. So like most folk arts, it was found items and recycled items. So many of the quilts from those days would be small pieces called scraps, scrappy quilts. And it was because they were literally using scraps from their clothing to make these bed coverings. So now we're going to take a look at some of the many kinds of quilts there are. So here's our first quilt, and Jerry's going to tell you about it. Now this is the legendary Underground Railroad quilt. So as you can see, all the squares are different but they all mean something different too. Now this one is where, it's called the North Star, and this is where the slaves were told to follow the North Star up to the North. Now with the, the ship, ship represents the ship they were brought over on. Right, Jill. I mean, but all of these would have a meaning that would help tell the story of the slaves. Tell the story. And if they saw this quilt displayed, then the legend has it that they would find safe haven for the evening. Correct. This is our log cabin. It's very traditional in that the middle square is usually red or orange, which means this is the hearth, the center of the home. Like where the, the fire, fire would be. Yeah, yeah, where the fire would be. And then these are all the logs that go around to make the log cabin. This one is dressed in plate. This is a replica of 30, 1930s and, uh, fabric. And they were made as feed sacks for the farmers so that when they were empty, they could use the actual fabric. No, nothing else, it's just that they're so much prettier than anything you find today. Quilts are now also being made in the modern uh, type. And the modern would be, you know, on this particular quilt, would be the different colors. They're sharp, they're clear, and they're very noticeable. And also, the quilting on this, but they're swirls. Modern they're swirls. Modern swirls, yeah. So this is um, a movement that's been coming along very recently. And this is another modern quilt. Both of these quilts have 
have what's called a variegated thread. And unlike old quilts that were all the same colors, the newer quilt threads being made change color as you go. We also do quilts, and even in, the, even in colonial times we did quilts, that would signify holidays. But this is the kind of thing that would have been made even back in the 1800s or 1700s for their holidays, because folk art represents things that were happening in your own culture and community. This just happens to be a modern version of it. This is what's called a scrappy quilt. And it's called that because you, take, you save all your scraps and then sew them back together again. These actually were very popular all the way through the quilting history. We've been showing the fronts. Lots of times the backs of the quilts, you would just choose one pretty fabric and then that would end up being the entire back of your quilt. But you could flip it over and use it this way as well. We have this one, I believe it's a pineapple block. This quilt is unlike most of the rest of these quilts because it doesn't have any batting or cotton or polyester inside to make it thick and keep it warmer. Instead, the quilter chose to use her scraps to make the front, but for the back, she used warm, fuzzy flannel. So even though it doesn't have a batting and it's quite thin, it would still serve its purpose to be a nice warm bed quilt. In the old days, they'd use scraps sometimes, or they would use cotton, and they would stuff whatever they had inside there. I, I, there are even probably uh, hay, references to straw. hay and straw if they didn't yeah. have anything we're else. Talk, we're talking way back. Right. Yeah. Nowadays, you can buy rolls of batting. It makes it much easier for the quilter, certainly much cleaner and much softer and warmer to use on your beds. So I'm hoping you liked our demonstration. You've seen lots of different kinds of quilts in lots of different fabrics and colors, and I'm hoping as you go forward with your project, you find an interesting way to express your creativity through scraps, too. Hey everyone, I'm Maddie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a tote bag out of an old t-shirt. So the materials you need for this project are an old t-shirt, a pair of scissors, and a marker if you want to mark off the lines we're going to cut. So the first step we're going to do is make the handles of the bag. So first we're going to cut the sleeves off of your shirt. If you want to make a line and cut, you can. Or you can just follow this seam along this edge here and kind of get those sleeves off. So now that the sleeves are cut off, your shirt should look something like this. Next, we're gonna cut the neckline. So these two sides will end up being the handles of our bag. So that's gonna kind of determine however far down you want to cut is fine. You can trace right around here or go a little bit deeper. So if you want, you can mark this off with a marker or a pen. All right, so now the top of your shirt should look something like this. We have the um, middle line cut and the sleeves cut off. Now we're going to determine how long you want your bag to be. So if you want it to be as long as possible, you'll draw your line somewhere down here. If you want it a little shorter, you can always move the line up. But before we draw the line, we're going to turn the t-shirt inside out at this point, and then we'll make our line. So I want mine to be pretty long. So somewhere down here, I'm just gonna draw a line all the way across. So the next step, we're going to cut the bottom of the shirt into fringe. So make sure that um, kind of the bottom edges are lined up at this point. Then to cut the fringe, you're just gonna cut slits all the way up to this line that we just drew. So I'm just gonna start at the edge. I have both layers together and I'm going to cut through both at the same time all the way up to that line. So I want these sides to match up, so I want to do it together. The thickness can be a little bit wider than your finger. So just continue that all the way across your t-shirt until you get to the other end. Remember to keep both sides held together as you cut so that they match up. And as you're cutting, make sure you go back and cut this end piece into two strips, kind of up the side of your shirt. 
So now we're gonna be tying the fringe. So each pair of fringe here has a top and a bottom. So one that's from the front side of the shirt and the back. So go ahead and take these two, the top and bottom, and just tie them in a knot. So I'm crossing them over once, pulling it, and then crossing them over again and pulling that. So I have one knot there. I'll go to the next one and kind of keep going. So you want your knots to be close to that line that we cut before, right? Because we don't want to leave too much space in between, but you don't want to pull it too tight that it starts to kind of pull at the other sides of the shirt. So, so I have three knots tied. We're going to keep going, but first we have to make another knot. So once you tie three pairs, we're going to have to tie the pairs together to kind of close these holes. So you'll see gaps as you're tying between the pairs of fringe, right? So what I did here to close that hole is I took one strand from this knot, so the pair on the right, and one strand from the pair on the left, and I want to tie them together in another knot to go in between. So tying it the same way, but you want one strand from each pair. So again, one from the right, one from the left. Tie them together and see it's closing those gaps that we saw before. So you can either do all the knots in a row or kind of do both knots as you go. So continue that until you get all the way across your t-shirt. If you need to go back and replay it to see how I tied, go ahead and do that. So at this point, all of your knots should be tied along the bottom here. And if you got confused with which ones to tie where, that's okay. Just make sure that there's no like big holes in your bag. If there are, just make another knot so that it's kind of secure. So then, that's pretty much it. You have your bag, these are the handles, and the bottom, so if you want your handles to be a little longer, if you wanna maybe put it over your shoulder, you can always cut this round part a little deeper to make the handles longer. But then, you have your bag. So you can carry some things in it, makes a great beach bag or grocery bag or whatever you wanna use it.